So tell us, who are these? These are the leading coup plotters across West Africa. I call them the coup troika. The coup troika? Troika. That's how, how I see them. Okay. This is Asimi Goita, mm -hmm. the leader of the military junta in Mali. Mm -hmm. This is the famous Dumbuya mm -hmm. from Guinea. Mm -hmm. And then you have the current one, Lieutenant Colonel, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Henry Paul Sadaogo Damiba. From Damiba. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is Guinea, ongoing. Guinea. Yeah. Successful coup against Conte. Then this is uh, Mali. Mali. Two coups okay. by one person. Where were two coups? Yeah, by the same person. In how many months? I think less than a year. How took he overthrew himself? He overthrew Bubakar Keita uh -huh. on the backdrop on the backdrop of a protest that mm -hmm. was led by um, Mahmoud Diku, uh -huh. a leading Islamic cleric in Mali. Mm -hmm. And then he was forced by ECOWAS to make some concessions. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, he came to overthrow the interim president. He made concessions and stepped back. Stepped back. And Wait. an interim president was created. Yeah, so he was a deputy. He rejoined the military. So he stepped back from his role as a leader of the coup and mm -hmm. took a deputy position. In the government. In the government. Mm -hmm. But there was this reshuffle by the then leader, which he felt weakened or disadvantaging in the structure of power. So he initiated a second coup. And, and, and he's back in power. He's the one who is asking France to leave. Yeah, he's the one. And this is our friend from Burkina Faso. From Burkina Faso. Okay, what happened at the ECOWAS uh, conference? You have a, So this is the ECOWAS conference. That is the ECOWAS conference. Uh, who are they? Where is, where is Buhari? He's not there. No, he, he sent the vice president. He was represented by his vice president, who was just covered by... Oh, okay. So this is uh, Hassan Ouattara. Hassan Ouattara. Yes, this, is Banjo. this is Mohamed um, Bazoum from and Niger. This is the handsome man. Who is he? I think um, this would be the Benin president, if I'm not mistaken. And then... I don't believe it. This is President Akufado, yeah. the chairman of ECOWAS. Who is this? Yes, he speaks very well. And this is? This is Adam Abaro. Oh, Adam Abaro, Gambia. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and this, this is a, a, a foreign for for assembly. And this is the guy can Sal. spoot, too, foreign assembly. The guy can spoot. Well, oh, this is Sal, who has just won the African Cup of yeah. Nations with Senegal. He's also the, the new African Union president and chairman. Oh, Sal is African Union president yeah. now. Elected at the last summit. Yeah, yeah. He replaced the, uh, the what do you call the Congolese leader. Oh, I see. Felix That's interesting. Chitikedi. And this is President Akufado and who? Nigeria's vice president. He represented oh, uh, Osibanjo. Yeah. Ah. Is, is he running for president, Osibanjo? Do you know? Well, there's this contention about he taking the lead over his former boss, Bola Tinubu. Yes. Bola Tinubu is running for sure, isn't it? Yeah. On the PDP's ticket? No, APC, the ruling party. Oh, Bola Tinubu is now APC. Well, he's always been, actually. He's always been. Uh, Bola Tinubu has always been APC. The Lagos, famous yeah. Lagos government. He's always been APC. So... Uh, Bola wants to run on the APC ticket. Yeah, the issue was that Bola Tinubu was supposed to be the vice to Buhari running mate, but then that would be a Muslim Muslim ticket. And that oh, was so he brought in Osabi, Osibanjo? Yeah, because Osibanjo used to be his attorney general when he was the governor of Lagos State. Ah, so Osibanjo is his, his godfather. So, uh -huh. so now but they, Osibanjo is a Christian, he's a pastor yeah, of a sorts. Yeah, so yeah, in yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in, in Adebayo's church, redeem, yeah, yes, redeem. correct. So that, that gave the ticket so a huge it, Christian influence. So was there's a loud call for him to contest, there's mm -hmm. this issue of will he adhere to the agreement. But do they go to a contest like they do in Ghana, where they go to primaries and the APC will have to select their candidate? Do they do well, that in Nigeria? Well, the APC has two. You could either do direct primaries, where every party member will come and vote, mm -hmm. or you use the electoral college. Electoral college, because that was what was used to oust the former Lagos State Governor Ambodi. You know, he mm -hmm. served one term, mm -hmm. but there was this belief that Tinubu ousted him because he felt he was really moving away from the plan that he has initiated in Lagos State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was these direct primaries, and that's how come we have um, Sanwolu. Okay, okay. So, Fashola, the other godson of Chinibu, is not in the contest. No, no, he's not in the contest. He's waiting for Chinibu to win and he becomes something. What? Nigeria also has ethnic and regional dimension to its mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at Buhari's victory, mm -hmm. Yorubas are technically the most powerful force in Nigeria. Because mm -hmm. the north and the east don't see eye to eye. Yeah, so when the north and east are divided, Yoruba is the largest. The Yoruba becomes the king maker. Okay. Because okay. Buhari contested three elections, mm -hmm. lost without losing the North. Okay. But he couldn't oh, win. Oh, so it was not the North that was that made him the no, victor no, no. in the last election. The Southwest crowned him. Okay, so without the, the South, without the Yoruba votes, yeah. only Northern votes cannot make you president no, no, in no. Nigeria. It doesn't no, happen. No. Okay, is that the reason why uh, Good Luck Jonathan is beginning to entertain ideas of running for a president again, similar to the John Mahama situation? No, you see, because he's hoping to get the South South and the Yoruba votes together. Well, in Nigeria, it's more easy to govern with the support of the North than to govern without the support of the North. Because mm -hmm. the North, in terms of its size, 
has a lot of influence in population. But, but if good luck is going in, he'll go with but the northern, northern running mate. If they not refuse to accept you, they can always create problem for you when they're when they in opposition to you. Okay, but have you also heard that Sanusi, the former yeah, mayor of Sokoto, yeah. who was in Ghana recently to greet President Akufado and went to see the Asante Hene, is actually also preparing to run for president of Nigeria yeah. in next year's election. But I think the position he has today is more powerful than the president of Nigeria, technically. What position does he have? He's the overall head of the Tijania movement in Nigeria. And the Tijania Sufi movement is a very powerful... But they are not, it's, not the, it's not the executive presidency. Yeah, and people who like him think that he is such a principled man, he has such global exposure that if he were to be president of Nigeria, a lot would change. But he has, so the young people are really pushing for him. But he has answered the question long ago. When he was asked, would he ever contest for the presidency? That was after he was dismissed mm. from the yeah, yeah. governorship and of the Central no. Bank. He said made, no. He said, he said the only... So, the only go for him was to, to, be the, to sit on the throne of Kano. Mm -hmm. You know, just like his grandfather. Yes. His grandfather was destroyed, mm -hmm. dethroned. Mm -hmm. He was also dethroned. Yeah, he's been dethroned. And yes. for the same reason, the why, grandfather why was... Why was he dethroned and then gets a post that you say is very important? How does it work? Well, I think the man is equally... Uh, he perhaps he's destined to lead. Because he was fired from this position. But when he came to meet President Akufado, he did not disclose the conversation he had with President Akufado. Neither did he disclose the conversation he had with the Asante Hine. Nigerian newspapers were high on speculation that he's going to announce to his friends in Ghana that he wants to run for office in Nigeria. So that election is going to be very interesting. It's March next year. It looks like that. Yeah, probably yeah, March. March next but year. Then the, the, very but tight, the president eh? must hand over, leave office by May 29th. So. Yes, that's how their system is. Yeah, you so. hand over in March and then you have up to May. But Buhari is out. He's not contesting. Or... We sure. don't know. He's not contesting. It's okay. He's not. So he's yeah. going to obey the two-term limit. He has no choice. But does he, does he have a role to play? Is he popular enough within the country and within the party to say that if he says, I want Osibanjo, Osibanjo will be the one. If he says, I want Chinibu, Chinibu will be the one. Well, in the north, he still retains his fanatic loyalty. Mm -hmm. But then the kind of support he had in the, in the south in his initial mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. first term, has been which displayed. was wrought by Tinibu anyway. That, that support yeah. was, but then, was know, wrought the by Tinibu. Tinibu brought it out together for him. And then the NSAS really tarnished his image. Oh, but that's gone. No, but then, that was, uh, to me, his posture was insensitive. You but he's not on the ballot. Is but it going to affect the APC? Is his posturing what? with NSAS, is it going to affect the APC? Well, APC has always run Lagos. Tinubu has always maintained his control over Lagos mm -hmm. in different names. Yeah. You know, we had AD, mm -hmm. we had AC, mm -hmm. ACN. Now APC. Mm -hmm. But then, if you look at the previous election, the gap between Sanwolu of APC and then um, Baba Jimmy Johnson, is it Johnson or so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from PDP, yeah. looks very, very narrow, unlike the previous one. Yes. Tells you that so that PDP is gaining ground in Lagos? You perhaps. Think? Okay. And that's the, that's the key and then, hotbed of Yoruba politics, yeah. Lagos. Yeah. And then the issue of NSAS might be a factor. We don't know how the youth will respond because Buari won election based on the support of the youth. Yeah, but Buhari was really And then the Twitter ban. Mm -hmm. Oh, but that election has a lot of question marks. Oh, the one that re-elected Buhari? If we, if we, even in terms of security, uh -huh. Jonathan did better than Buhari in terms of ele electoral security because even Jonathan was, Jonathan conducted the election when Boko Haram was in its peak. Mm -hmm. The casualty was followed. We're talking about 2015. 2015. Mm -hmm. We saw the election went smoothly in terms of the casualty, the rate was very low compared to what Buhari did. What was the casualty rate in the 2020 elections? In, in the, uh, is it 2019? 19 it was. Yeah, 2019. I think it's probably something in its end rate. So if the election had been quoted on quote free and fair, you think Muhammad Du Buhari would not have been re-elected? Perhaps the gap would have been narrow. But he would still have been re-elected on 50% plus one? Probably. Okay, then there's no point. There's no point of the conversation. If you think he would have been re-elected anyway, but 50% uh, plus one... In a winner takes all situation, or but in, a, in a first past the post situation, 50% plus one is as good as 90%. But the beauty of democracy is yeah. the credibility of election itself. Yeah, but if you are saying that, even if you reduce the credibility yeah. you, and you come to even kill, you will have Buhari winning 50% plus one. That's the question he needs to answer. When you go to an election that's first past the post, all you need to answer is, or it's a majority really, it's not a first past the post, it's majority. Yeah. All you need to answer is that I have attained the majority figure. That's it, I've won it. If I get 50% plus one, I've won it. Somebody gets 99, he's won it. The same, you take the oath and all the powers and Article 58 and 57 will be granted to the person. So I, I like you when political science analysts like you say that, oh, the election could have been better. And then when they ask the question, uh, so if the election was better, well, that's the question the Supreme Court asks. When you go to the Supreme Court, they say, okay, all the votes that you say were illegal, would it change the outcome? 
If it won't change the outcome, the Supreme Court has no business with you. <laughs> if you to change the outcome, yes, they will listen. So you are concerned about the security of the election, but you think Buhari would have won it anyway? Probably. Okay, let's go on with our conversation. So this President Kufado is talking about the yeah. summit will focus on emerging this threats was statement in, before in the region. Okay, this is the statement before the before summit. The okay. Summit. Uh, and this is the articles under which. These are the articles of a. Which one would you like us to look at? This one relates to what do you call it, elections. Mm -hmm. So now, if you are to condemn the coup plotters, we need to look at what necessitated some of the coup. Mm -hmm. Were there strict adherence to some of these protocols? Mm -hmm. We saw in Konde's case. Konde is Guinea. Guinea. Mm -hmm. Attempt to massage the constitution. Yeah, for the third time. Four yeah. flat, four short of this particular. Yes, it did. No but sorry. when ECOWAS uh, leaders breach these things, yeah. what happens? Are, are there, is there a sanctions regime? That is the problem. I don't know. ECOWAS is trying to treat military coup with hash, with stick, mm -hmm. and treat extra legal coup because i still consider watara to be a coup plotter which uh, as, as we're discussing next week you have to give us the information on Co togo and Cote d'ivoire the reaction of watara's third term yeah. the reaction of the ivorian people even the world generally yeah. the the european union and all that to watara's third term the reaction to conde's third term were completely different By european we, we need to understand why ivory coast will have a situation where there's a third termer and there's not much problem maybe maybe psychologically and um, uh, sociologically, it's coming from the longevity of Hofe Buanye, which the Ivorians were used to, which the Ivorians actually did enjoy. The longevity of Hofe Buanye seemed like a blessing to them. So, perhaps in the mind of the Ivorians, longevity of a president who is good is not that bad. Maybe we have to look at it, but just off the top of my head, that, that is popping out. Okay, so you said there's no sanctions regime when they breach these things. Yeah, they pay the law. Mm -hmm. If you go and look at the laws on sanctions, Okay. No, no, this is just a preamble to that. Okay. Okay. In the event that democracy is abruptly brought to an end, mm -hmm. by any means, mm -hmm. it, is, it is not specified that military. Yeah. So, meaning by massaging the constitution force under any means. It should, yes. So, if you are sanctioning the military men for plotting a coup, why are you exempting the likes of Kundi and Watara? Mm. It's always very important when you discuss the concept of uh, popular legitimacy. You see, when you look at popular legitimacy, it will sort of create a difficulty for the implementation of these protocols and the ECOWAS. Because, as you know, in political science, we have different aspects of legitimacy. Legal legitimacy, which we all know, political legitimacy. Yeah. But the popular legitimacy is always contentious. If you, you violate this, yeah. but it's popular with the people, how does ECOWAS deal with these things? The ECOWAS has no business. Actually. Like you are telling me today that there's been the celebrations in, in Mali, Mali over a matter that is supposed to be an illegitimate coup and the decisions they are making. When the Malian people, that is their country, they have sovereignty, you know, when they are excited about that, how do you go in and, as ECOWAS and say that I'm going to throw a bomb and all? This is going well, to be I very, think very difficult. That's when we need to look at the context and the history of a particular country and approach it well. Mm -hmm. For example, in the Malian case, the approach of ECOWAS is totally wrong from day one. Mm. Because we saw a huge protest. It wasn't as if the military came out of the barrack for no reason. We saw the use of force against civilians, mm -hmm. which is self in breach of some of ECOWAS protocols. Mm -hmm. But then ECOWAS kept quiet. So when the military made the military made their move, they were making their move based on the call of the population. Okay. And then there's one person that we've always not involved in addressing Mali. But it's actually a kingmaker. Who is that? Uh Sheikh Mahmoud Diko. Sheikh. Mahmoud Diko. Who, he, he lives in Mali? Yeah, he's the head of, I think, the, one of the Islamic organization in Mali. Mm -hmm. He actually led the protest that brought Bubakar Keita to power. It was his support and endorsement that brought Bubakar Keita to power. It was his opposition that unseated Bubakar Keita. It tells you that you cannot address the Malian situation without involving Mahmoud Diko. Are there Christians in Mali at all? They yeah, are, but very few. I think Mali is about 90, 96% Muslim. So they it sort of cuts across most of the French countries. Côte d'Ivoire also has a large uh, number yeah. of... Ouattara is Muslim, isn't he? Yeah. Yes, uh, Côte d'Ivoire has a large number of Muslims. I don't know about Togo. I think Burkina Faso has a large number of Muslims. It cuts across the northern part of West Africa. But Ghana Was there an Islamic evangelism or Islamic evangelization of the northern part of West Africa 100 years ago before colonialism? Well, initially, Islam came, Islam came in West Africa through two phases. The first phase was through trade. Mm -hmm. The issue of the Trans-Sahara trade. That's yeah. Mansa Musa you're talking about? Or, or after Mansa Musa? Around Mansa Musa era. Okay. That was through trade. Mm -hmm. 
And then one of the leading figures around that time were the, the Tuaregs. Yes. And we have this particular Kunta family. One of the leading figures, Sidi Mukhtar al-Kunti. He was the leader of the, the Kadiria. But it was Sufi Islam. Mm -hmm. You have two branches of the Sufi Islam in West Africa. You have the Kadiria and then you have the Tijaniya. Mm -hmm. But around, around 1804, the mode of spreading Islam changed from trade, peaceful con uh, conversion to jihad. Because Usman Fighting. Nefodil, yeah, Usman Nefodil launched a revolt mm -hmm. against the mm -hmm. Hausa state. You know, by yeah. then, the northern yeah. Nigeria... Usman Nefodil was Nigerian. He was or he attacked the Nigerian Hausa. But now he will be a Nigerian. Because of where... He was in Sokoto, wasn't he? Yeah, he was in Sokoto. Yeah. But at that point in time, he was born in Gobir. Mm -hmm. But then, then even the houses were not united. Kano was a kingdom on its own. Zauzau, which is called Zaria today, was an emirate on its own. Mm -hmm. You had a Gobir, so you had independent Hausa states mm -hmm. fighting each other. Mm -hmm. It was after the year of 1804 that these whole individual kingdoms formed the core of Sokoto Caliphate, which mm -hmm. it two capitals, one in Sokoto and one in Gwandu. Mm -hmm. And after that, others took cue from him. But most of these, these jihad also have ethnic undertones. Most of the jihad were led by Fulanis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that's the, interesting. You had the like of Umar Tal al Futi of the Tukulo Empire. You had the like of Ahmadu Baba of Masina. And that also lead us to Mali. That in as much as we have Islamist revolt in Mali, we have two classes of Islamist revolt in Mali. Mm -hmm. We have the Islamist nationalists and the Islamist separatists. Separatists are asking for what? That is why I said ECOWAS approach to Mali itself is full of misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. The Tuaregs have always considered and disliked the Southern dominance. So for them, they see no distinction between the French colonial state and the post-colonial post state because mm -hmm. it has one characteristic, Southern dominance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then within day, so in as much as they want to break away from Mali and from what they call Azawad, you have two factions. You have the nationalist secularist led by the like of Sharif Aggali of the um, National Liberation of Azawad Movement, who are secularists, who want to create a secular state. You have the like of Yad Aggali, who want to create a theocratic state. So in this situation, there's a banter. That is for the North, where you have the Islamic separatists. Mm -hmm. They want to separate from Mali and create an Islamic a theocratic state. Let me ask you one question before we wrap up on this. It's very interesting, though. The, um, the colonialists, yeah. whenever they came, especially to Africa, they, they established a kind of north-south divide where they dealt with the north and the north the south became, they dealt with the south, the south became stronger, better in education and all of that. And at independence, the independence states tried to breach the gap and all that. But I can understand that for coastal uh, nations or coastal nation states like Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, because the colonialists came by the sea, so they arrived at the coast first. But in locked land, uh, countries like Mali, why the, the colonialist occasion a south, north, I don't, I don't get it. I think it has to do with where they find more support and where they find more resistance. Oh, I see. The Tuareg but in, in the Gold Coast, the, 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 the colonialists did not even go to the north. They just decided to work in the south, work with the south, and then sometime in uh, 1945, the Alan Benz Constitution of 1946 for the Gold Coast yeah. is what brought the south and all of them together you know, brought Ashanti and the Northern Protectorates together with the Gold Coast to become one country. So they didn't even go there to determine the, the level of resistance. Are you suggesting that the people in the South, like the Yorubas, the Gans, the Fantis, they were not resisting the colonial authority? If, for example, there's always this belief that the North was being powerful by the, Nigeria, for example, was being powerful by the British deliberately. Mm -hmm. You know, because of education, the Southerners were the leading forces fighting for independence. Yes, yes, yes. But because the North had indirect rule, mm -hmm. the traditional power structure was left intact. Mm -hmm. So they felt comfortable with the colonial rule. So there was this belief that the first election in 56 was, uh, what you call it, skewed to favor the North over the South. And that problem has persisted today. But you see, it also deals with the philosophy between the British and the French. Mm -hmm. Once the French were chasing territory across the board, the British were targeting key resource centers. Yeah, that's true. And then another thing is that now we need to look at why do we have anti-French sentiment in certain French Francophone countries? Like Mali now. Mali happens not to be an exception. You know, Mali was one of the, one of the two Francophone countries that sided with Ghana. 
mm -hmm. the Guinea Mali Ghana Union. Yeah, Ghana Union. Yes. So perhaps anti-French sentiment in in Mali was just buried because he hadn't seen mm -hmm. enough reason to create a spark. But now that they've seen, gotten the chance to vent their anger, it has been revived. And then also the coup in Guinea-Bissau initially looks like something out of the blue. But if you really understand the history of Guinea Conakry and Guinea Bissau, then it wouldn't really be a surprise. Because after the independence of Guinea Conakry, for example, Sekuture really backed the Guinea Bissau, Cabral, in his mm -hmm. fight against what do you call it, the Portuguese. So Guinea Conakry has always have influence over Guinea Bissau. So mm -hmm. there could be there's this tendency of domino theory. A success in one side affecting sort of the coup in the other. But then this picture is very important here. Mm -hmm. One problem with Mali is that you have different competing operations. And when Damiba overthrew Kabori, one of his excuses was that the government wasn't, what do you call it, effective in it, uh, security operations. The military were ill-equipped and the rest, like the insecurity in the country. Mm -hmm. And he published a book, West African State and Terrorism, Different Responses, touting himself as a security expert. One of the problems is that you have different competing operations within that space. Mm -hmm. You have Operation Barkani, led by the French. Mm -hmm. You have the G5 Sahel Group. Mm -hmm. You have the MINUSMA, which is the UN-led mission. Mm -hmm. You have the Operation Takuba. And these are They're all in Mali? All in Mali. Right now? Yeah. And you have... Oh, the with all the security presence and there was a coup d'etat? Yeah, there's this belief that perhaps the French had a hand. But if you look at the anti-French sentiment, you mm -hmm. can also question that approach. But what it also shows is that Perhaps that sense of stability, French control, has always been vague. Mm. Okay, tell us about Mali and football, then we can wrap this up. So what happened with the Malian... No, it was a Burkina, Burkina and football. But let me quickly run up. You very see, quickly, yeah. You could see this picture is very telling, it's revealing. Mm -hmm. They are here raising the Russian... The Russian flag, yes, I can see that. Was they are agitating against the, what do you call it? The French. The French. But then in response, in solidarity with France, a couple of Malians were sanctioned. The, 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 press, the Prime Minister and some of the... Sanctioned by whom? By European Union. Unilateral sanctions. Yes, 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 yes. But yes. then this also gives them advers adversarial legitimacy. Because those are the kind of things they need mm -hmm. to, continue and, to continue to entrench themselves in power. Why do you have Winston Churchill there? There's a quotation he made about democracy which I want to use to end. <laughs> okay, so let's hear you on football and Burkina. Then we yeah. go to Churchill. What, what, tell us about football in Burkina. What happened with the footballers? Yeah, despite the fact that they lost mm -hmm. at the, what do you call it, third place, yeah. yeah, third place. Mm -hmm. The, what do you call it? The leader. The, the current leader. Mm -hmm. You realize that sport has enough power to unite the country. So he's trying to governize support. The coup is popular, do. Mm -hmm. But I know, in as much as the coup is popular, there'll be pocket of resistance here and there. Yeah. So he's not trying to use sports to governor, so he, he met the footballers. Did he prof offer them some money? Did he promise them something? Much wasn't said about the outcome, mm -hmm. but then he made a very unique quotation. This is what he said. What is it? You have given us joy. joy. You have given us much disappointment yeah. as well. But man builds himself up on his mistakes, mistakes and failures. The result of the last game is bitter, but it's up to us to know how to swallow it and move forward. Uh, that's the current leader. Okay, so that's, 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 very, that's very direct. You've given us joy. You've given us also my disappointment. So the disappointment is a reference to uh, the, losing a 3-0 yeah. lead to Cameroon and then, and then, and then eventually losing and the And then final. this is the JC so of the number 10 player, their lead player, which has inscription of his name rather. Oh, and uh, it was given to him yeah. by and the players. Is, yeah, this is his name on it. Ah, I see. Paul Henry Sadago Damiba. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so the so players gave him use, some, some yeah. endorsements. So on the to use to Let's go to Churchill and then we can wrap up. Uh, and then I have well. a quotation which I think... Mm -hmm. We should be very mindful. I think it will help Equality leaders to understand. Uh, okay. When he said, "I see you are very concerned about," it. he says, "Democracy is, is not just, just a region of discussion, of discussion but a, a domain, domain of, of action." action. And that okay. is where Equality always found wanting. Oh, I get it. I get it. We got ourselves. Equality yeah. limited to the region of discussion we and not and much talk, action. Talk, 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 talk. Okay, I'll tell the Equality leaders. That's Al Hassan Bello, our international relations correspondent. <laughs>